Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm back with another tutorial on GNU Radio. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to teach you guys is that how you're going to use these blocks to achieve whatever the task that you have to achieve. Uh, the last video was on digital modulation. Uh, so we use a PSK mod block based on constellation point. You can change what type of modulation you need. Uh, today we're, we're it's, it's still the same block but we're gonna at the receiving end we're gonna use something called a root raise cosine filter. Uh, the reason for us to use this root raise cosine filter is uh, what we want to do is that sometime uh, when you're modulating the signal using zeros and ones which is 99.9 .9 percent of the cases that you have your digital modulator you have some type of an information which is in a form of a zeros and ones uh, when you transmit this type of a signal it goes through some type of a noisy channel and once it goes through a noisy channel what it does it actually corrupts that uh, signal and the best way to actually extract at the receiving end or you can also use root raise cosine filter at the transmitting and receiving end but uh, for example you want to actually uh, extract your signal without losing any information without losing much of an information you can use something called a root rose raise cosine filter uh, just to give you an idea uh, you can go to a wiki of this and this is what it looks like so you have some bits which are going into a channel which is added a white Gaussian noise basically it's gonna add some noise to your channel then you have some raised root cosine filter it will try to extract your signal out without losing much of the integrity of your signal that's the idea behind root raised cosine filter um, as per the document it says much more effective as compared to you have different type of filters like low pass filters and these blocks which are available to you on GNU radio so we're going to actually see how good is root raise cosine filter without going into the mathematics of it uh, so the idea is this that you want to extract a, a square wave signal or your zeros and ones from a noisy channel so for that for that purpose we have something called i have a block let's look quickly go through our flow graph everything is exactly the same we have vector source then we have psk modulator and we have constellation point to be four which means that it will have four constellation points which means i'm using two raised to two would give me four hence we're using two bits at a time and so we're packing two bits in in that time period it's going into a throttle block as you can see and then I also have a constellation sync uh, and a time sync attached to it and then also I introduce another block which is called a virtual sync so what does virtual sync does that it will actually depicts as you're transmitting it like for example we have blocks like USRP a block and we have a block like RTL Osmocom and things like that where you can attach your physical devices and these blocks actually depicts those physical devices in in your flow graph so we have something called virtual sync so basically sort of like a transmitter that is sort of like a loop back address that is going to transmit you're going to transmit it and then you're going to receive so just like virtual sync at the receiving end we have something called virtual source and this source will be this signal that is coming out of this sync is going into that virtual source now in order for me to depict that additive white Gaussian sound the noise I'm using an adder block and then I'm using a noise source which is available to us here all right and in a place of its amplitude I'm using a QT range slider which I'm calling noise which is right here so I'll be able to change that noise figure and see what's going on so that's the basic and then of course so uh, yeah last thing so I have noise source and a virtual source I have an incoming signal so I'm looking at it in two different ways so after the addle block I'm looking at my signal okay without root raise cosine filter I'm looking at it just when I add noise to it how does that spectrum looks like now the second is the addition of this noise which is acting as a noisy channel it's going into my filter definitely and then I'm seeing checking to see uh, how does this my filter is performing and I'm seeing the output of that 
on frequency sync which I am calling it with RRC and before RRC I'm calling it without RRC so these are the two things that I should actually look at it in my flow graph uh, so that's the basic idea let me just execute my flow graph uh, let me just ex okay all the I haven't touched anything I haven't touched anything here. I left everything as is. I'm just simply picking up the block from our repository and then I'm just I'm putting it in and I'm seeing the actual behavior. Except for one thing, I have just changed this gain. This gain was turned out to be one, but I have just changed this gain to five. Uh, but let's just leave it at one and let's see what's the effect. All right, so once I have this, everything is intact. So let me just simply run my flow graph and see. All right, so let's look at this. So there is no noise right now. So this is what I'm transmitting, and I'm exactly receiving the same thing without any noise. So we're good. Everything is good. All, all of it looks good, and my constellation diagram is looking good. All right, everything looks good. There is no noise in the channel. What I'm, whatever I'm sending, I'm receiving it perfect. Now let's inter start introducing noise. All right, so I'm introducing noise at the receiving end. So this is at the transmitting end, and this is at the receiving end. So let me just introduce some noise. As you can see, the shape of my signal that is changing, also my amplitude is also being reduced in the presence of noise. And by looking at this signal, I won't be able to make out at the receiving end what, is, what was my actual signal because this is what is being transmitted. So this is being what's transmitted. This signal went through a noisy source because I'm using a Gaussian noise and I'm changing my noise based on the slider. I cannot make up this signal at the receiving. By looking at this signal, I cannot make up this signal. Basic idea. So now let's look at the same effect with RRC. When I look at my RRC, it is much, much better. This is without RRC. I, I cannot see these dips because definitely these things are repeating itself. You have zero ones, zero ones, then you have ones and things like that. But with RRC, I can still make out that shape, which is this shape. I can still see some of the signals component which, which are present. Then I can also make up these as well, these spikes, and then these spikes are present in my signal. So that's the beauty of using uh, root raised cosine filters are that you can actually extract your signal in a presence of noise we use this filter a lot uh, this is one of the job of this filter is to to reduce your ISI which is inter symbol interferences which are present these normally are present of course in digital modulated signal because you have symbols which are much closer and then you want to reduce that noise so it's a very beautiful filter I I like it I mean it's, it's nice you can clearly see the performance I mean this was actually being transmitted this is with noise as you can see I cannot make out what that signal is but with RRC I can easily got a clue or I'll get some idea I mean, I can easily demodulate this signal or whatever I want to do at the receiving end using this signal. Um, so that's the beauty of root raised cosine filter. Without going into the mathematics of it, you can just simply apply this filter in your flow graphs and see what you can achieve with that. Uh, having that said, I hope you like this small tutorial on root raised cosine filter. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.